The Tier 3 Threat Level Zone is one of the most lucrative areas to loot and complete contracts in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. So, how do you survive this high threat level solo? Let's show you how. The first thing we need to talk about is your setup. It's fairly common knowledge by now that having decoy grenades is going to be a huge benefit wherever you go, but however you want to tackle Tier 3 is really up to you. The more comfortable you are, the less you'll have to get prepared. There are a lot of people who really enjoy the fact that they can take on tier 3 with just a throwing knife and decoy grenades and that's it. I am not one of those people. Personally, I like having a weapon so that I can actually shoot back at the zombies coming at me. And if you ask me, I would recommend a blue or rare aether tool. I have purple because I just got a ton of purple in my inventory. And I would recommend a tier 2 pack-a-punch level. For your perks, at the very least, stamina up is going to be huge when evading the zombies. And then I like speed cola for faster armor plating, juggernaut for more health, and deadshot for more damage to the headshots of zombies. Like I said, the more you get into tier 3 the more comfortable you're gonna be and probably the more comfortable you'll be with going in less and with less and less stuff. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing a tier 1 stronghold or infested stronghold here and that's because I'm interested in these chests. These chests have a fairly good probability but not a guaranteed probability of getting us some ooh that's some actually good stuff but we're looking for those turret circuits which ooh I don't know if we're gonna get here. Ooh but that is a casimir which we will store here. So of course the most efficient way of doing tier 3 is just jumping in with that throwing knife with those decoy grenades and nothing else and just going in as quick as possible. However, it is perfectly acceptable and you should feel no shame in just completing some contracts and doing some things to get set up first. Oftentimes I find myself doing a contract or two to get a perk that I'm missing or to fill up on armor plates in my inventory space. And as I said, the more you do tier 3, the more you're going to know what you're comfortable with doing and you'll naturally be more more efficient. But once you feel fairly set up and ready to take on tier 3, make sure you top your grenades and ammo off here at one of these ammo refill stations and always loot the gas register. And of course you can always stop at a buy station if you need to top off on armor or any sort of equipment that you need. Now there are a couple ways to approach the tier 3 area. This is among my favorite. This bridge right here is pretty safe. The bridge over there usually spawns an abomination and that's pretty tough to get through. This back way over here we see these guys leaving is all pretty safe too. There's not a whole bunch there. But as we enter in here with your stamina up or if you don't have anything, make sure you have your fists out. And obviously if you have throwing knives, you can throwing knife all the hellhounds and whatnot. But if you do have hellhounds, you can see that just a simple pack punch tier two weapon is usually good enough. And all of these zombies do create a lot of stress and anxiety. But if you look, you're pretty faster than they are. Now we do have a couple other people here really grinding contracts. So hopefully we get a good kind of rotation of them them going on here. But one thing I will show you that people like to do, people really hate this escort contract. They really don't like it. It's, it is really difficult. And in fact, I don't think I could even do it solo. So I'm sorry if you came here for this contract specifically, but what people normally do is they'll pick up this contract. They will accept it. And then I like to use this ladder over here and then they will cancel the contract and then they'll come over and use these zip lines right here because as you can now see on the mini map we have this cargo mission contract that we can pick up right down here and that is very consistent that happens every time with those specific missions and as you can see i like to jump off of that corner right here and as we can see uh, again, I guess I'll just show you since there's not a whole lot of zombies here. This is a PAP-2 weapon. Uh, yes, it is purple. It's not blue or anything, but dang it, they can still kill zombies. And I much prefer this than just a throwing knife. So I very much like this. So we can open up the garage door, hop in the LTV, and I will show you the path that I like to take. There's a little bit of different paths. Again, a lot of these YouTubers will say, you got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. It's really whatever bay way works best for you. I like to come up to this corner. It looks like, oh no, there's not a pathway. What are you going to do? You can just hop the corner. It's really not that big of a deal. And then I like to make a sharp little turn here, go across here. You could cut this corner a little bit sharper, but it'd be a little bit steeper. So I just like going through this path. Feels pretty quick. Feels pretty fast. I like it. Go up this hill. Try to lead it straight on. If you are going to leave the LTV, you want to make sure you're not leaving it in a path where it's going to be in your way for the next LTV mission that you do because 
there's the only only the one LTV mission. And then from here, you could check, make sure. Oh, look at all the great loot you just got. Isn't that awesome? I am super close to pack punch tier three, which is going to help us out tremendously here. Don't be too focused on all of the other things that you forget to loot stuff too, because there could be some really good loot here if you look hard enough. All right. It looks like I'm going to have enough to pack a bunch after I use this buy station. So I'm going to go sell something real quick. But first, I'm going to look in this chest right here. Oh, look at that turret circuit, turret circuit. Never mind. I'm going to do this turret circuit first. Look at that. That is why you loot in tier three. Those ethereal crystal infused merc caches are excellent for finding these uh, turret circuits everywhere. Now let's just hope we get a turret circuit close to this HVT contract. I always try to make my path go through an ammo station here just so that I can throw some decoys and get topped back up. All right, we're going to do an HVT mission. I'm going to activate this guy just in case. Oh my goodness. All right. Yeah, using your field upgrade. I guess, you know, your field upgrade is really up to you. I really love Tesla Storm when I'm playing by myself, but also having Aether Shroud or even Energy Mine can be really good in a useful, in a dangerous situation. And I'm Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a turret circuit anywhere near this HVT, so I have to go pack a punch first. All right, knowing where the pack a punch is and being able to, uh oh, well, I guess not, no, we're knowing where to go is also very important, uh, but being able to just kind of swing by the pack a punch and jump around. They give you these really big, wide open areas here in tier three, so it's best to use them as best as you can. And if you don't feel like fighting, you could just run away. That's one of the best strategies here in tier three. That's why people can do it without any gun. And when you jump off a roof like that, look at that. We're now all by ourselves. And usually what people do here in tier three is they do things by themselves or they go on rooftops and they act like Batman in certain ways. They try to go rooftop to rooftop because zombies really can't get you when you're when you're on the roof. Now, they can obviously scale the roof, but a lot less of them spawn and a lot less of them get aggravated on you when you are on the roof. So for this first method, luckily we don't, or I guess unluckily, we don't have a turret circuit, but we do have a Pack-a-Punch tier three weapon. And I also did thankfully put on Napalm Burst for this situation, exactly. But as you can see, it's purple. And yes, it's not like the fastest way to kill this guy, but it's definitely doing damage and it's not gonna be that bad. This is a great test in patience and practice and training in these open areas. Oh, there's a Mimic here too, and a Disciple. Isn't that interesting? Now, in terms of speed and efficiency, yeah, this is definitely not the way to do it. It's exactly why people use those turret circuits or cancel these contracts when they don't have anything nearby. But this is a great situation. Actually, I'm going to Molotov this guy, too. That's actually a good idea with those manglers. If you're in this situation where a whole bunch of other teams are sitting here in tier three and they're doing these things, then you have no other choice other than to accept whatever contracts you're given. This is exactly a great situation for that. You can throw a decoy grenade if you really want to... Uh, focus fire on this big bad right away. Sliding, I found, is really, really effective here in Modern Warfare Zombies. Tax sprinting, sliding, and then shooting it gets great distance away from you and the horde. And we've almost got him here. It took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it should be right here. After a quick reload, we should get it right now. And he is dead. Very good. And a lot of the zombies die right away. We can kind of take a peek here. A crystal whoop de doo But thankfully, we are in prime position here to cancel this escort contract all over again. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to run to this ladder. I'm going to go up this ladder. I'm going to cancel my contract. And if you're having trouble with these zip lines, what I do, as you can see, it's not giving me the prompt. So what I do is just that. It's never failed before. Uh, is run up to the back of it, jump it, and then hit the interaction button, and it usually forces that prompt on you. So sometimes you'll notice a group of zombies here. You can kind of just get their attention and then lead them away. Classic zombie training stuff. Fake them out, go to the left, and then the right. Kind of juke them out a little bit. That should be really easy and consistent for you to pick up that contract. And now that we got a tier three pack a punch gun, these guys should go down with absolutely no fight. Look at that. And they are all gone. Well, except for this guy. And we're back on this contract again. And please note, I am going purposefully slow just to kind of take my time and show you guys that we don't need to sit here and min max everything in tier three. This is just to show you what's possible and you can see we parked our ltv away so we can still hook this up really easily very nice don't want to block yourself on a future run and there's the refined ethereum diagram again look at that i 
already have that. Ooh, but luckily, okay, luckily I think we're the only ones here and we've got this raid weapon stash contract. This is one I've been really excited to show you. This is a really fun one if you ask me. The first thing I like to do is I like to throw a decoy over there, get more ammo, pick up the contract. That's a good little series of events that I like to do. Oh, is this not open yet? Um, Look at that turret circuit. Let's go. All right, so we could use that turret circuit right in this turret right here to make us really pass this with flying colors and make it super easy. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you a couple of different strategies here. I'm going to hit a decoy, obviously, as you saw. But this is one of my favorite places to be in all of zombies. This is absolutely so much fun. You throw a Molotov down and you just go to town on the zombies right here. Look at all of that. Super fun. Usually, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, did they patch this? Did they patch this? Okay, bad example, beautiful people. Usually you can get up on either one of these signs and just have absolutely no issue just demolishing these guys because they usually don't come up here. And then you could throw a decoy grenade. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Well, okay, uh, in any case, maybe don't do that then. I assure you that usually works for me, even solo. I wonder if this gun isn't good enough because I've been using some pretty good guns over here. That's perfect. Perfectly all right. I'm going to show you a different strategy that you may have already seen in a video of mine. I'm going to throw a decoy, get some time to go up this ladder, go up this ladder, jump on the roof here. This is a pretty tricky jump. We're going to go on this roof right here, and then we are going to go all the way around. We're going to go up through here, and this you should be able to start seeing. Oh, well, there's a little two box we can. Okay, cool. Uh, but you can see we can actually complete the stash from right here. Now, as you're up here, you've got to be very, very careful because these guys still will see you and they will try throwing their meat at you, as you can see. Now, of course, we could always put in our turret circuit down there if we really wanted to. But oh my goodness, these guys are super accurate. What the heck? Let's throw a Molotov. Oh, that's why there's like 17 million of them down there. Oh, there's a full armor, too. That's nice. Actually, you know what? Let's get that. Let's throw a Tesla Storm on here. Let's um. Oh, OK. Okay, full armor. We Tesla stormed those guys. Very nice. And we did pick up some more armor, as you can see. Look at all the armor that's on the ground right there. That's one of the other reasons why I really love this. If you need armor or refill armor, you don't have ammo or you don't want to hit a uh, buy station, this is one of the greatest things for, um, for getting more armor back. And then once it gets about 95, 96, I like to throw a little decoy here, try to get them away from me as much as possible. And they will usually die. And then we'll just hop on down here, try to pick up some armor plates. Yes, look at that all the armor all the armor let's go and then hopping on down here always be careful there is like always like a secondary horde of enemies right here Oh my goodness, look at that legendary Aether tool. Absolutely, I'll take that. Oh, that's beautiful. And you can see after a couple pretty decently easy contracts, we have 1,700 points. So, oh my goodness, grabbing the contracts is a struggle for me sometimes. Hey, buddies. Okay. Now, I wish this was a mega abomination because as I was going to say, we have a ton of points and the Juggernaut killstreak, which I currently have, Juggernaut killstreak, excuse me, uh, that I currently have is worth 10,000 points in the buy station. So usually you can complete these HVT contracts. Oh, look, there's another turret circuit. That's so good. And another Casimir. I'll definitely take that. If you buy a Juggernaut killstreak, it makes these HVT contracts super fun and easy. So you've seen that you can just power your way through it with a Pack-a-Punch 3 weapon. Now I want to show you how to do it with the Juggernaut killstreak. All right, there's our Mimic friend. Now we're going to pull out our Juggernaut killstreak. Let's kind of throw it in the middle of this road here. We're just going to run away from that Mimic until we have time to pick up our Juggernaut. Now in the Juggernaut, you are actually, you're still able to take armor damage, but from what I've been able to tell, you don't take regular damage. So you should be invulnerable. Um, but that is to say, don't worry about uh, healing up armor plates before you get in the Juggernaut. It's only going to be a waste because, as you can see, they will break your armor in here. But even if that was a Mega Abomination, you should still be able to complete it with one Juggernaut killstreak. You can see on the bottom right, it's a timer instead of any sort of like damage thing. So I think you're just invulnerable for this time, but have fun. This is just a great, fun thing to do. I absolutely love it. Let's take a peek in here amazing loot yet again. Actually, no, we've been getting some pretty good loot, so very nice. All right, let's gonna 
stock up our armor plates back again. Let's kind of take a look and see what else we got. We do have an escort contract, but I do want to do one more HVT to kind of show you guys how to do one of them with a uh, turret circuit and just how powerful it is. Scratch that, scratch that. We just got a spore contract, a spore contract. That's awesome. Let's get it before they do. Now this spore control contract, you might be rolling your eyes and thinking donuts. What are you doing? Why is the spore control contract so important to you? Well, this spore control contract is actually one of the most newbie friendly, I wanna say here. So one of the most important little nuances to do is you want to refill your decoys and then you wanna throw a decoy, make sure you got some time here to flip this and then you wanna stow your decoy. So I'm gonna replace that stamina bottle right there. I'm gonna pick this up. There we go, sometimes the stowing doesn't work. Okay, cool, but now I've got two of these little pods here that I can do, but actually, oh no, I'm not gonna do that. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hey buddy, hey buddy, all right. So there's really nothing special special about this uh, spore control contract. All I like to do is I like to just go run through these guys, kind of hop them on there, throw one or two on there. Yes, that will spawn in more enemies, but it really, if you can train in this big open area and it's always in this big open area, you should be just fine. I usually do it two at a time because, you know, usually doing this solo, you wanna throw them as you slide. I find sliding to be a really good opportunity to switch guns, kill dogs, all that sort of good stuff. And of course, if I had time, I definitely would have put in that turret circuit in that turret just now, but that's okay. I'm just making big loops around this, like classic zombie training over and over again. Gonna get this guy. We've only got two left in the corners here. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of zombies on us, honestly, and uh, this is a great way uh, if you're looking for those 10 kills within five seconds mission or camo challenge, this is definitely one way of doing it. Because also, if you line these guys up, oh, they're not lined up very well, but you can just shoot them. You can get a whole bunch of armor and ammo and all those drops if you're low on that. That's also really easy to do as well. And yes, of course, remember, you're using a Pack-A-Punch tier three weapon. You can just demolish these guys. It's really fun. And then coming all the way over here. Yes, we've got a ton of zombies over there. Oh my goodness. We can just kill this last spore and we should be good to go. Okay, there's our loot. You can loot that up. There we go. Now, of course, you still got all of these enemies behind behind you, but thankfully you could just redeploy your decoy grenade, kind of throw it over there and you can have a little bit of time to deal with whatever you want to deal with. Look at all these enemies right here. All right. So what we got to do, we're going to lead them right through here. Oh my goodness. There we go. Lead them right through here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at all of those guys. Awesome. And just like that, they are mostly all done. And you can see we've got a ton of loot, ton of armor, ton of ammo. It's really not that bad. All right. We picked up another bounty. It looks like there might be a turret circuit nearby so we can kind of just make sure we're safe by buying a juggernaut here first. Oh boy, there's a lot of enemies over here. All right, uh, here's a decoy for all y'all. And then we're gonna go buy a juggernaut right down there. All right, we're approaching the turret circuit. We can kill these guys, kill the hellhounds around it. We're gonna get these guys uh, distracted real quick. We're gonna put in the we're gonna put in the turret circuit. Thank you, Mangler. Put in the turret circuit. Jump over the bikes. All right, that should take care of all of those guys over there. And here is our mega abomination. Let's see if we can't lure him up here. Now, sometimes I think this might showcase it actually i think these hvts have a specific range yeah you see how it's turning away right now it's right outside the range of this turret oh my goodness that's so disappointing so i guess i will show you that this really is possible with a juggernaut kill streak all right let's throw our decoy let's get our juggernaut here awesome and then we are we do have to aim for its mouth you want those double yellow hit markers here make sure you're doing that extra damage there you go right on that mouth right there and he's he will rush you he will kind of hurt you obviously smacking at you but as you can see we're not taking that much damage. He just now broke our armor and that is it for the Mega Abomination. And he can mow down the horde that spawned in after him. Nice and easy. And a large rucksack and a rare Aether tool. Isn't that lovely? All right, we have time for one more Eliminate Abomination contract. Very good. That's gonna be in Old Town. Perfect, that's gonna be right next to that turret circuit. Hopefully that works. Try to cut through here, ascend this really quickly. Oh my goodness, that was so close. All right, we've got the turret over here. Let's see if we can't get on this roof first. Oh boy, the server's lagging pretty bad. Oh no. All right, I'm going to throw down one of these Casimirs that I got. I think the dogs can get up here. Oh boy. We'll put in this turret circuit. We'll get this mega abominations. Ooh, look at this. Okay, all right, nothing in there. All right, try to get this guy's attention. All right, it looks like we're leading this guy over here really good. It looks like our turret circuit is definitely going to be able to reach. Oh, he's going to be, he's going to be. Okay, there we go. Now, hopefully, as you're going to be able to tell, look at that turret circuit. Just absolutely decimate that mega abomination. This is one of the best things you could do. Okay. 
<laughs> any any minute now, turret circuit. Any minute now. All right. Sometimes you gotta. Oh look. Okay. All right. It did it. It did it. We're okay. Play cool. Play cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Oh, look at all the loot. Awesome. And do we have? No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, cool. Oh, he's taking on this abomination too. Look at that. Look at that turret circuit go absolutely wild. That's crazy. Oh, the storm is right there. Okay. All right. Well, that's no bueno. Oh, I just took out that mangler. Very nice. Well, unfortunately, we won't be able to do the outlast contract, but from what I've seen, that Outlast contract does not get very many spawns. It is very rare that I get an Outlast contract, and all I do is I do, well, I do that strategy that absolutely failed for the Raid Weapon Stash contract. With all of the points that I have, I am going to buy myself another Juggernaut, so that way for the next game, I am ready right off the bat. It looks like I'm the last one on the server too. That's pretty fun. Oh, and would you look at that? It looks like they brought this really cool bike in the x -Ville. And the biggest tip about grinding tier three contracts that I could give is just be patient and have some fun. I've grinded so many tier three contracts and I do have most of them. I have all of them. I got the ray gun. Uh, I have all of them except the purple epic aether tool. So just be patient. You're going to get it. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Now, as you're grinding tier three contracts, contracts, perhaps you'd like to listen to this video in the background. Be sure to check it out and stay beautiful.